Hello everybody and welcome to Mr. Stansfield's education videos. Today we're talking about portraiture. All right. So what makes a great portrait? We've looked at the work of Platon and Richard Avedon, uh, two portrait photographers who use simplicity in their arrangement and composition of a photo to be successful with a portrait. So really, uh, what makes a great portrait? Um, a portrait is simply a picture of a person. So what makes a great picture of a person? Um, we take pictures all of the time of our friends, of our family, of ourselves. And so what makes a portrait different than just a picture of my family or a picture of a friend? I think one of the things that you're going to be looking for is um, kind of what makes that person who they are. And if you can capture that in a photo, you're going to be successful. So I'd encourage you to try to figure that out. Who is this person? What are they all about? What do they love? What do they hate? And then if you can connect with that person, I think there's a good chance that you're going to be successful at making a picture of that person. So that's going to be the hardest part, connecting with that person, talking to that person, making them feel comfortable in front of the camera, making yourself feel comfortable behind the camera. And that kind of process isn't easy and there's no magic kind of answer to uh, do that. I would say the longer you spend photographing, usually the easier it gets. If you can kind of break that down a little bit and get past the awkwardness uh, after a little while, uh, oftentimes that's usually a key to success is just spending a little time. Um, all right, let's talk about some other ways to be successful. So one of the things that I want you to think about is posing. How is your subject standing, sitting in the picture? Um, where is your cropping and composition happening, right? Oftentimes, if you think about a, a camera, a cell phone camera, uh, the vertical orientation is often called portrait orientation for this reason, right? Typically, we go with a vertical portrait, but can it be horizontal? Sometimes it's called landscape horizontal. For sure, you can definitely use a horizontal and a vertical orientation of your camera. I would encourage you to try both. But what else is in the picture? The work of Richard Avedon and Platon really almost exclusively, not entirely, but I, I would say they are both known for really simple white or plain uh, color, often neutral color like black, gray, or white backgrounds. So finding an area that you can photograph somebody with a really plain background with this little stuff behind them, I think is going to be key. And the other thing that, that you may not have noticed from watching the um, documentaries on both photographers is that actually most of the time they're kind of farther away from the background than you might assume. So you don't want to put your subject all the way again. So see, my background's actually kind of close to me, but you know, there's a couple of feet behind there. That helps get a little separation. Something plain like this, uh, you know, even a design is fine. Um, the simpler the background, the better. So make that choice. The next thing that we'll notice about those photographers is they use lighting that is often indirect or reflected light. So we looked at lighting when we did our light and shadow project, right? Direct versus indirect. Typically, we're looking for indirect light. And one of the ways you can get that is by photographing next to a window using window light. Now, what that means is putting the window in front of your subject, right? and putting the window behind you as the photographer. That's going to lead to um, some success. Or the side. You don't want to put the window behind your subject, right? If you have a light behind your subject, then we don't see their face, and we want the, the window to be lighting up their face. Now, can you ha have it from the side? Absolutely. And you can get good results that way. But just make sure that the window or the light isn't behind them. That's not going to be typically giving us the best uh, results. All right. Let's talk about, um, so uh, back to posing really quickly, right? Like, um, are they standing on one foot or the other? Are they crossing their arms? Are their arms in their pockets? Are they rotated? Is their head rotated and tilted? All of these things, I would say, really make a big difference when you're dealing with portraiture. And so if you can ask your subject to try different poses, that's great. And what I've provided you is actually a resource that you can look up and, and kind of look for different posing that you think are going to work with your subject. Now, just a, a, a word of caution. Um, it's very gendered. Um, it's like men posing and women posing, the resource that I have for you. 
Uh, if I could go through and kind of make that more gender neutral, I absolutely would, and I would encourage you to think of it that way. Um, really, anybody can be in any kind of pose, and the idea that only men can pose one way and only women can pose the other way um, doesn't, first of all, leave any room for folks who uh, are uh, on different aspects of the gender spectrum, and then also it really uh, limits you in a way that I don't think is, is uh, really helping. So I would encourage you to think of all the posing uh, uh, as, as uh, gender neutral. Anybody can pose any way. Um, okay, so uh, we've talked about lighting, right? Window light is great if you're, uh, if you're shooting outside, that's also fine. Um, finding a simple background, posing, okay? Body position, head position, neck, rotating, tilting, all of these things. Um, and finally, uh, expression. So what is the person who you're photographing doing with their face? Are they making eye contact or not? Are they looking somewhere? Are there uh, facial expression belying some sort of emotion? That's what I want you to be thinking about. So typically a portrait often isn't like this, say cheese, right? What we want to do is think a little bit more about the emotional tone. Um, and again, who is this person? That's really the core of this. Who is this person? And then how do you capture that? Are they a serious person or are they always joking? Um, are they kind of reserved and quiet or are they really loud? And then can you capture that in a picture? I would encourage you to try to capture that in that picture. Um, Let's talk a little bit about equipment. We don't have, uh, most of us uh, don't have a lot of choice with the, our, our equipment if we're photographing with our cell phones. If your cell phone has multiple lenses, choose the lens that will zoom in the most. Okay. Um, you can try shooting in portrait mode on your camera if you have that option. I would encourage you to make sure that if that is the case, if you're going to shoot in portrait mode, that you have the opportunity or the ability to make the image um, capture dual, dual kind of pictures, that you have an unedited photo and then one that has that blurry background. Um, as long as the background is plain, and remember that's part of one of the things that I really want you to try to do, as long as that background is plain, you should be okay in terms of not using portraiture mode. You shouldn't need to use portraiture mode on this project if you can find an area that has a plain background. Those are some keys to success. Look on Google Classroom for a Google Doc, some more resources, those um, posing resources. Um, and I would say the longer you can spend with your subject, the better you are going to, uh, the, the results, uh, the better the results will be when you complete this project. So good luck.